Hello and welcome to High Caliber TV, your source for figure and model updates every Wednesday and Friday. So today on the workbench, I'm going to be showing the progress on the Edelweiss build. So as you can see, the Edelweiss itself is actually finished. And really happy with the way this turned out. You can see their little license plate that they give as a decal. Pretty cool. Uh, legend stowage for a Leopard Mexus. Uh, a bit of Hessian wrap around the barrel to admittedly disguise the really egregious seam line that was along the middle there because it was a two-piece barrel and try as I might I just couldn't get it so that it looked symmetrical enough and rounded enough uh, no matter how much building and sanding I did it just it didn't look right so I covered it up uh, made the belts and the buckles the buckles are photo etch buckles and the belts themselves are lead foil from a wine uh, cork top if you know what I mean. Just take that, uh, measure it out, cut it. A uh, lot of weathering done along here. Not a lot of muck, but just sort of wet looking dirt that had been kicked up like it had just gone off road. And that's done with a, a mix of AK, MIG, life color even, and some ancient CMK stuff. Uh, so yeah, not really any particular brand loyalty when it comes to weathering. Uh, some of the details here, you can see the gleaming aluminum, aluminum, aluminum shells there. Those are from AFV Club. Those are, I want to say 75 millimeter, so like a Pac-41 shell. Could be 88s though, don't uh, quote me on that. I took what I had in the spares box and the ammunition inside the turret ring and in the magazine down here are all shown as being gleaming silver on the references, so I just went with the aluminum shells that I had. A couple of neat uh, add-ons that I did myself. These are transfers from uh, one of Alan's 48 scale Thunderbolt sheets that he didn't need anymore, and he just handed them over to me. And man, they have a lot of really cool stuff. These are no step panels, it actually says no step on there. And there's a lot of technical data, little placards and things like that that I've sort of put on Certain areas like where there would be maintenance on the back decking. Uh, there's a couple along the turret. Um, all of these little caution markings. It says caution under them. Uh, they all come with the kit. And those are some of the decals I knew I wanted to use from the kit because they sort of, they definitely lend themselves to the overall look. Uh, if I can turn this around here. The crew is the Alpine figure. He turned out really well. Really happy with the way he fits in and uh, all the cables and stuff that are going down into the turret. A couple of neat little additions though. This map is 135th scale from a really old, uh, I want to say Battle of the Bulge kit from Tamiya. They did this officers conference in Winter Gear and they got it comes with a little 35th scale map sheet. So that's cut off of there. The way that I applied it was I mixed carpenter's glue and tap water, mixed that up so it was really thin with water, and then brush that over and then you can lay it on and of course the water evaporates, the glue turns transparent and then you're just left with uh, a weighted down adhered piece of paper, which is just sort of a cool tip. Uh, this extra stowage here, I didn't want to load down the turret with stowage because this is just sort of a, a civil defense vehicle and it's sort of organic to an infantry unit. It's not really a tank hunter, uh, but I knew I wanted there to be some stuff that the officer would have held up there for defense. So he's got his weapons belt. That's a Walther, I think P09, P08, maybe, don't quote me on that. P38 could be uh, holster. And then there's all the Mauser 98. Uh, spare cartridge boxes there. Some of them are open. Those are from Gen 2 DML. The belt itself and the buckle, buckles photo etch. I don't think you can even see the buckle. I think it's on the underside. But the belt is just the same as these. Uh, wine top, lead foil, measured cut. So yeah, there's the Edelweiss. Really happy with the way it turned out. I, it, it, it's, it's, it's a simple kit um, and it sort of looks like, you know, there's a lot of sort of soft detail on certain areas, but man, it it really shows out the end that it's a Zokai Mura 
effort. So yeah, on to the figures. So here we are back with a few of the pieces that are going to go onto the base once the groundwork is finished. So this is the wounded uh, Valkyrian. He's a Japanese infantryman from Bodhi Miniatures with a replacement alpine head. So yeah, pretty cool. And then we've got another Valkyrian. This one is a Japanese infantryman from Mini Soldiers with, again, a replacement alpine head. Pretty happy with the way these both turned out. I think they're going to add a lot to the base. And then a couple of little things. This is the weapon for the fallen Valkyrian. He, it's a, uh, a DML Car 98K, but I've shortened it by, you know, what is to me three or four millimeters at the barrel, and then taken off a little bit of the stock to make it look like a short carbine, and given it a little sling with uh, lead foil, just to give it a little bit of extra life. This is one of the, I'm pretty sure it's a 75 millimeter round that's going to be behind the Edelweiss, like it's been tossed out the turret. So yeah, pretty cool. Again, it's been left basically untouched. I want it to be gleaming like they just took it out of the box, threw it in the turret ring, and then fired it. So yeah, not a whole lot of wear and tear on it. So this is the base itself. This is an incredibly rough stage where it's at where I've put down a few block layers of this. Uh, <clears throat> it's a green foam that people use to put artificial uh, flowers, plants in as like their quote unquote earth. But it also doubles as a sort of bulking agent that you can use. As you can see, this is just a wooden box that has no lid on it, nothing. So inside here was hollow. I filled it with the green uh, foamy stuff. I would not use the foamy stuff as your final layer because it looks like uh, not only would it be depressed easy, like if you touched it or even put something on it, uh, it also looks like it's quite flaky. Uh, so that's why I've sealed it with this uh, it's just a clay that is, it air dries, Does it's not supposed to shrink. We shall see how that goes in the coming days. This is a few days old now. I've given it plenty of time to dry. This is about the third application of this stuff. As you can see, I've just sort of mounded on chunks of it where I wanted there to be an additional sort of bulk to that area. But as you can see, the uh, green stuff was at its most prominent here that's where the height is it arcs down and away and it arcs down and away there so obviously the uh, the Edelweiss was placed in here to give me the tracks the depression I then sort of did some uh, creative license pushed some of the earth away which will give me shall we say sort of a base for the earth that'll be built up around where the tracks are this, it's probably not going to show up too well on the camera because of the light. Oh, there it is. Uh, but this is the Black Dog VW. The primary burn marks, all the sort of discoloring is done in a larger sense. I've still got to add the white, dark gray ash around the base of it here. Do a little bit more weathering on it. I can't decide if I want it to look fresh or like it's just a wreck that was on fire at one point. The cobblestones here are for Linden, rest in peace, and there's going to be additional debris here arcing down like there was a causeway here, like a raised causeway on a country, country road, and as if this has been cratered, and so there's going to be loose cobblestones around here, and some additional debris down to here. Then the eagle vice is going that way, the figures will be up on the causeway, as if they're they're being supported by the Edelweiss here. Figures probably facing that way to keep a little bit of symmetry going along. It should be good. My prime method for 
actually applying the earth is going to be to use my patented mixture of um, two types of flock. One is one's thick, one's really thin and fine. I can just show you here actually. These, this is not what comes in the Citadel box, by the way. This is just where I carry it. Um, so we've got very fine flock. This is Earthland, uh, Woodland Scenix. That's, you know, I mean, everybody uses that stuff. Uh, this is sort of, uh, it's a little hardier, and it's also a little fluff. There's a little bit more fluff to it. I, you can see a few loose stones in there that I just sort of tossed in. But then this is a great, this is perfect stuff. Uh, this is a mixture of two types of loose tea, I think. Uh, that, I mean, I cut open really cheap tea bags, and then I also used some dark, I think it's dark Russian tea. I don't know what it's called exactly, but it has these, it's so perfect. It has these in it when you open up the uh, the bags and they look like little twigs and so when you get all of these mixed together it makes this very uh, dense rich look that you can actually then go about painting to make look as if it, you want it to be churned earth or depending on the density it could be actual grass or you know um, dying grass like if it's in the fall or the winter but also on top of that you can mix in stones you can mix in bricks i've got a, a different mix in a bag which is just stones flat stones and bricks of different different sizes and the sort of different size aspect of it is what gives you a really fantastic look but since they're all mixed together it'll make it harmonious overall that being said the areas here are not going to look the same probably as the areas here because this will be earth from a field that is gradually going into the destroyed causeway. So with that in mind, the way I'm applying this stuff is I'm going to be mixing good old wood glue. Uh, I tried using sort of whatever you'd call it, classroom, like white glue. That stuff, in my opinion, is not as good for this because it doesn't seem to thin in water as well. It's it doesn't it creates a suspension rather than a solution in your mix. So with this stuff though, I've found it'll break down really well and then mix with the water, and you can make a really thin paste-like substance that you can paint overall. Toss on your different types of groundwork, flock, whatever, but you can also make successive thin layers out, of course, after you let the first one dry, that you can then brush on, add more stuff, uh, keep sort of building it up, do whatever you want to do with it, and then, yeah, and then you can put on, i uh, debatable whether or not I'm going to put on these tufts of grass. Um, I mean, they might not look right when everything's said and done, but we shall see. So, this is the state of the Edelweiss base diorama everything's coming along full speed ahead i'm fortunate enough that i was able to get the edelweiss done for ipms vancouver it showed there which was you know it's always great it's always nice to contribute to the show um get uh put on the table with modeling peers and yeah so check us out at highcaliberminiatures.com thanks very much for watching we're on instagram facebook pinterest twitter occasionally uh yeah Thanks very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.